بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا محمد و آلہ طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین Welcome to the heroes of Karbala. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be speaking about another very important companion of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam who had not joined him from Medina or Makkah but rather had joined him on the journey towards Karbala. I'm speaking again of a very notable companion from the city of Kufa Zuhair ibn al-Qain al-Bajali It's mentioned that he was returning from the Hajj that year and on the journey towards back from Mecca towards Kufa he met Imam Hussain salam at a place called Zarud uh, which is a place in on the way towards Kufa Initially his tent was far away from Imam Hussain salam and when Imam alayhi salam realized or was informed that Zuhair ibn al-Qain is staying there, he sent a message that I want to meet you. This is notable because Zuhair ibn al-Qain was known in Kufa to be an Uthmani, that he was an advocate of the third Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan, and who used to prefer Uthman over Imam Ali alayhi salatu salam. So he sent a message to Imam Hussain, Imam Hussain Salam sent a message to him and asked to meet him. Initially he was reluctant or he didn't want to meet the Imam alayhi salatu salam. But his wife says to him that, again as we have noted previously when we're speaking about Habib ibn Madahir, that he, the wife was the one who supported them. And in the case of Zuhair also the wife supports him and says that if Imam wants to meet you, why is it that you refuse to meet him? Go towards the Imam and see what he has to say. So on the insistence of his wife he goes to meet the Imam salam. When he meets the Imam, it changes his entire life. When he comes back from having met the Imam alayhi salam, he goes back into the tent and he says to the rest of his family members who are present with him that now I'm going towards Karbala and I want all of you to go back home and you are free to choose whether you want to go or you want to come with me. Some accounts state that one of his cousins who was traveling with him also joins him and comes towards towards Karbala. When Imam Hussain again at this moment in time is still on the journey towards Kufa and on the journey he meets Hur ibn Yazid al riyahi who has been sent by the forces of Yazid in order to prevent Imam Hussain going towards Kufa. At that moment in time where Imam meets Hur he gives a sermon he gives a speech and after having given this sermon reminding people that this journey is a journey of sacrifice the first person to stand up and support him is Zuhair ibn al-Qan who's just joined him and where Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam was uh, stopped and prevented to go towards Kufa by Hor, there was a confrontation and when there was a confrontation he Zuhair suggested that Imam Hussain should fight with the group and try to go towards Kufa. Imam Hussain says that to remember and he reminds us of a principle here. He says remember that I will never initiate or start the fighting. This is in line with the principles of Rasulullah and of Imam Amirul Mu'mineen and of all of our Ma'sumeen alayhimu salatu salam that they never initiated the fighting. Imam Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam even with the Khawarij always gave the option to prevent the fighting, to stop the fighting, to wait until the enemy would initiate the fighting and then they would 
respond. So Imam al -Salam also says to Zuhair the same thing. He says, I will not initiate the fighting. It is only when Hur's forces uh, wanted to initiate, Hur stops them, prevents them, they pray, and then Imam Hussain alayhi salam agrees with him to go towards Karbala. Zuhair, as we mentioned, was changed his life coming towards Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam. Now he's obedient to the Imam, he's well known. He is a personality who is, has a very strong and forceful personality. He gives many suggestions on the night of Ashura, on the day of Ashura. They said, it is mentioned that when on the night of Ashura they go towards the forces, it is Habib ibn Mudahir and Zuhair ibn al-Qain who go towards the forces of Umar ibn Sa'd and say, what is it that you would like to do? What is it that you want to do? And they said, we have been ordered to fight you until you abide by the orders and commands of Ibn Ziyad. One of the people in the, in the army of Umar ibn Sa'd calls out and says, Oh Zuhair, you were not a follower of this household. And instead you were an advocate of Uthman, you were an Uthmani. And Zuhair replies that, remember that my being here shows that I am an advocate of this family, of this fall. I am a Shia of, of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu salam. And he says that when Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam called on me and I came and he said to me, then I responded to his call because I was not amongst those people who wrote any letters nor did I send any messengers. Nor did I promise to help him, but when our paths met and he called upon me, I responded to his call and therefore, here we are. And it's mentioned that on the day of Ashura, when Imam Hussain organized the battle, as was the case in the Arabian society at the time, that there would be a, uh, a standard bearer of the army and there would be a commander on the left side and the commander on the right side. So on the morning of Ashura, Imam Hussain salam gave the standard, gave the alam, gave the raya to Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and ordered the left side of the army to be uh, headed by Habib ibn Madahir and the right side of the army to be commanded by Zuhair ibn al -Qair. And at that time, he again took this opportunity even on the morning of Ashura before the fighting starts to preach them and ask them about why they were fighting Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam. And says to them, remember that if you fight Imam Hussain alayhi salam and you're killed fighting Imam Hussain alayhi salam, then you're going to be damned in this world, you're going to be lose in this world, and you're going to lose in the hereafter. But they all did not, uh, they did not pay attention to him. And instead they continued to Ali Abu Billah curse Imam Hussain alayhi salam and praise. Ibn Ziyad. Then the time for Dhuhr came. When the time for Dhuhr came, Imam Hussain salam sent messengers to the forces of Umar ibn Sa'd and told them that give us a break while we offer our salat. Shimr ibn al Joshan says that Hussain pray, he says that Hussain pray. Because your prayer, but your prayers will not be accepted. At this moment, Habib ibn Mudahir is enraged and he says that, How dare you make such a statement? You think that your prayers are accepted while well, the prayers of the son of the Holy Prophet are not accepted? In any case, Imam Hussain says, We will pray, even though they do not want to stop the fighting. It's mentioned that one of the companions had come. And reminded that Imam salam, said that this is the time for Dhuhr and Imam said to him that may Allah count you amongst the Musalleen that you remember the prayer at this difficult time. When the Imam began the prayer, then the people who stood in front of him in order to defend him were Saeed and Zuhair. It's mentioned that they would they stood directly in front of the Imam alayhi salatu salam whilst the Salatul Khawf was taking place and arrows continued to be fired 
and they took the arrows on their chests. To the extent that the Imam -salam completed his prayer, as he completed the prayer, Zuhair and Sayyid fell onto the ground from the weight of the arrows. So many arrows had been fired on their chest that they could not bear to hold the weight of the arrows in, and they collapsed as a result of the weight of the arrows. But they turned to Imam Hussain and they didn't complain or say that Ya Ibn Rasulullah because of these arrows this is what happened to us. But rather they turned to Imam Hussain and said, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, were we faithful, were we loyal to you, what we were commanded to do by you? That we, our job and our responsibility was to defend the Salat and that we defended it. Imam Hussain says, indeed you were loyal to the cause of defending the Salat as a result of these arrows and this uh, fire, these, these, these arrows being fired onto them, they collapsed and were made shaheed. Another riwayat mentions that even after receiving the arrows, Zohar still was able to go towards the battlefield and he fought in the battlefield and eventually he was killed. We look at the lesson from Zohar and from Sayyid and their shahadat is that Imam Hussain emphasized the prayer, not only the prayer, but also praying on time. That he didn't uh, delay the prayer as a result of the fighting going on, even though they refused to stop the fighting. And he continued to uh, offer the prayer and he allowed two of his companions to be as a human shield in order to defend the Salat. So it shows to us from the story of Karbala the importance of offering the Salat, the importance of offering the Salat on time and also the importance of defending and protecting the Salah that has been offered as we read in the Holy Quran that it is one command for protecting the Salat, for uh, establishing the Salat and another command for the Mu'mineen, those who protect and now do hifadat of the Salat as well. Zuhair then goes towards the battlefield, he fights, he's killed as a result of the fighting and then he uh, becomes one of the shuhada of Karbala. If we now examine what happens after his shahada, we uh, realize another very important lesson from Imam That is that once he's made shaheed and he, the news of him, of all the shuhada being killed, reaches Kufa, the wife of Zuhair, which according to some accounts, he had divorced her before, he left and went towards Imam Hussain and other accounts, he told her, you're free to go. Um, she sends one of the servants with a kafan and she says that Hussain is grandson of the Holy Prophet, son of Zahra. Somebody must have given him a kafan. So I'm giving you a kafan for your master Zuhair. The servant comes towards Karbala he sees that there are bodies everywhere with no kafan. And he comes back. When he comes back and he's still got the kafan with him, the wife of Zuhair says to him that I sent you with the kafan to give to your master. Why is it that you didn't give the kafan? So he replies with this beautiful reply, which again gives us an insight into how Imam -salam has changed the way that servants think, the mentality, how, how it's been changed. The servant says that when I went there and I saw that there's 72 bodies with no kafan and I only had one kafan, so what should I have done? And then he says the most heartbreaking statement. He says that when I saw that the son of Zahra alayhi, had no kafan, when the master had no kafan, how could I give the servant a kafan when the master was lying there with no kafan? This is the way that Ahlul Bayt changed the way and the mentality and the thinking of how servants think about themselves. That even if you are a master in this world, your only success is by being a servant of Ahlul Bayt 
and for us to be a servant of the servants of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, even that would be a remarkable achievement because the servants of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, are those who offered their sacrifices in this way at the, at the, on the day of Ashura. Zuhair, uh, who was not, who lived his whole life believing that Uthman was greater than Imam Ali والسلام, just one conversation with Imam Hussein والسلام, it changed his life forever and allowed him to become those whom we send salam over every single time we do the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It is an important insight that when we recite the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu salam, we are, after having recited the ziyarat of Imam, we recite the ziyarat of Ali al Akbar and then we recite the ziyarat of all the shuhada of Karbala. And in that ziyarat we say, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi. May my father and mother be sacrificed not for Imam Hussein, not for Ali ibn al Hussein, but for the Shuhada of Karbala. For the Shuhada, for those people who sacrificed their life for Hussein wasalam, and became so great that every single believer is commanded to say, May my mother and father be sacrificed for you. Who said this? Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu salam said this. Ma'asum Imam said that may my mother and father be sacrificed for you, O Shuhada of Karbala, who are not Ma'asum, who are from ordinary households, who are ordinary people. But they showed their level and devotion to Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu salam through their action and through what they did, even if they lived their lives believing something else. And the final moment, just one conversation with Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam, was able to change their lives and change them forever. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin al-masoor.